Uh, first speaker uh, will be Jutta Dickstein, and he will talk about agreements, agreement tests, and PCT. Thank you. Uh, thank you for coming. Um, so, before I start uh, defining what agreement tests are and what are PCTs and so on, I'd like to start maybe with the example for the phenomena that uh, interests me, um, which is sometimes called the nine versus line example. So the setup is as follows. We have some finite vector space V. And for every affine line L inside V, we have a low degree function that's defined only locally on the points inside that line L. Um, if the set of local functions is consistent, namely, if for every two lines that intersect on a point V, f of L1 and f of L2 agree on the assignment to that point V, then it is well known that uh, there exists a low degree function G so that uh, every FL is in fact a restriction of this low degree function to that line F. Well, this is not such a very exciting statement, right? All this says is that low degree functions are functions where every restriction to a line is low degree. Um, however, we can ask ourselves whether we can sort of robustify this uh, statement. Uh, one more question, what do you mean by degree here? Oh, um, so you think of, uh, you can expand every function as a polynomial in a finite vector uh, space. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You will see soon that like, uh, we don't really care about low degrees, so just for the example. Uh, the question that we will care about is like this consistency question. So, um, so again, we try to robustify the statement and ask what happens if our set of local functions are not consistent on uh, like the entire uh, pairs of lines, but maybe only for most of the pairs of lines, say 99%. In this case, and this is already a theorem, uh, one can show that there still exists a low degree function that agrees with most of these uh, uh, local functions on the line. Um, so this is a theorem by uh, uh, Gemmel, Lipton, Rubinfeld, Sudam, and Wigdelson, which was also, used, uh, also proved in more generality by Rubinfeld and Sudan in the 90s. Yeah, so something has to vary here, right? It's not a, so what varies. Yeah, so uh, I'm not giving this uh, formally. I'm just uh, doing this example. But like, if you like, uh, if one minus epsilon percent of the uh, pairs of lines uh, are consistent, and like one minus some constant times epsilon percent of the lines agree with some low degree function, there's like uh, there's a there, there's a precise way to quantify this, but uh, that, let's uh, ignore this for now. Um, in fact, I just wanted to comment that even a stronger statement holds in this case. In fact, even if you only have like a, a, a small but constant uh, 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 fraction of these pairs of lines that are consistent, then already you can sort of recover some structure there. You can find a low degree function um, that agrees with these uh, 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 local sets of functions on like another maybe small constant on the lines. So even if we know like this very um, this very mild uh, uh, property, already we can find some structure. So um, so this is like a, a nice consistency theorem, and a bunch of those uh, have been proved as lemmas in like uh, uh, theorems regarding PCPs and, and locally testable codes. And in the late '90s, Goldrich and Safwa sort of shut off on the details and just asked like a more uh, abstract question about like this consistency lemma in general. So they thought of the following setup, where we have a set system that consists of three parts. Um, so B would be just some finite set. Um, S will be a collection of subsets of V. And we will also have a distribution, which I'll call B test, which is just a distribution over pairs of subsets. Um, the objects that they were looking to uh, in, looking to study are these sets of local functions. So as you can see, for every uh, um, little s in the collection of sets, we have like one function f of s that's only defined on the points inside s to some, I don't know, finite alphabet, maybe zero one. Um, the property that they were trying to uh, uh, study uh, was whether this set of local functions actually comes from like one uh, uh, function on the whole vertex set Namely, they wanted to understand whether we can determine if the set of local functions has like a, one function on the whole vertex set so that like most of the local functions are actually restrictions of it. 
Here, when I'm writing this probability, I just mean like uh, the number divided by the total collection of cells. Um, so, of course, you know, if we actually read all these, uh, uh, all these sets of input, we can maybe uh, give a very accurate answer. But uh, as we saw before, we really want to like devise a super efficient algorithm that will sort of randomly only probe a couple of these functions and already give like kind of an accurate answer to whether this property holds or not. So, um, so we consider the following test where we randomly sample a pair of sets according to the pre-specified distribution. And we say yes, or the test accepts if uh, the two local functions corresponding to these sets agree, namely assign the same values to all the vertices in the intersection of the two sets. Um, okay, so this is like a nice test. And like the main question in, in this field is to whether determine, you know, in which uh, set systems like this, is this test actually meaningful? Does it actually say something about the property that we're interested in? So like the soundest uh, guarantee that I want roughly says that if we can say that the test passes most of the time, then there should exist a function on the whole vertex set that uh, most of these f of s's are restrictions of that function. So to be a bit more precise, we say that the set system is C sound for some C greater than zero. If for every set of local functions and every epsilon, if this set of local functions passes our test with probability one minus epsilon, then we can find a function on the whole vertex set so that uh, on one minus C times epsilon of the collection of the sets, we have that f of s is equal to this restriction. So I will just uh, comment that we can look at other soundness guarantees here. So like from the second part of the example, we can also ask ourselves what happens if the test passes like not with 99% probability, but with only like a smaller constant, in which case sometimes we only want a, a function on the vertex set that agrees with our functions like on a small constant. Um, I'm not gonna define this because I don't have too much time and also, uh, the definition is quite similar to the previous one, albeit uh, quite more technical. Uh, just one question. When you Sorry. say probability of fs coinciding with g restricted to s, yeah. are you, I mean, are you also choosing the point b or when that's all, that holds? I, I mean that it, it agrees on all the points inside s. Okay, understood. Yeah, so it, so it needs to be like complete agreement. I, I should say that there are a lot of like soundness notions out there sometimes. People are happy if they agree only on, I don't know, like 99% of the vertices or something like that. Um, I think it's simple maybe to think about this, albeit it's sometimes imprecise. Great. Um, so uh, we already saw an example to this phenomenon, right? In both regimes where like our uh, V was points in a vector space and our sets S were like all these lines, um, maybe provided that the functions were low degree, um, there are examples out there where you need to make no assumptions on the function and, and this uh, holds in full generality. Um, so in the next five minutes or so, I would like to maybe give some motivation about why I didn't study these um, uh, objects and their connections to uh, what's called PCPs. Um, however, uh, I don't want to define PCPs because that's quite a technical definition and I don't want to make more than one of this stuff. But you can say it's probabilistically checkable. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Instead, I'm going to define what is a constraint satisfaction problem or a CSP, which uh, could be used to like equivalently define PCPs, even though I think it's like the less common way to define them. So the nice thing about the uh, CSPs or constraint satisfaction problems is that probably we all heard about them, even if we don't remember. So these are like uh, uh, computational problems or computational tasks, such as coloring a graph or trying to satisfy a Boolean formula. In these uh, 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 computational tasks, we get as input a bunch of variables and some like local constraints on these variables. And we try to find assignments that satisfy the uh, largest number of constraints possible. So I'd like to introduce notation and like uh, uh, um, give this definition and I thought it would be nice that while I define it, we also see as an example how like I can talk about the problem of uh, three coloring a graph as a constraint satisfaction problem. So a constraint satisfaction problem is actually con consisting of four things, uh, variables uh, which we call V, 
Um, so in graph coloring, I take as my variables maybe the vertices of the graph, um, some finite alphabet where we're supposed to assign every uh, variable some letter in this alphabet. So in the graph coloring case, maybe for three coloring, we'll have like uh, the three colors. And we also have a bunch of constraints. So I like to think of every constraint as sort of a subset of the variables. So in graph coloring, this will be like one constraint per edge, right? Because the edge, edges define what are supposed to be the functions here. And for every such subset, we will also have like a set of like legal functions or some condition on when this function is supposed to satisfy the constraint. So in graph coloring, uh, you know, for every edge, our constraint will be like the set of functions on the edges where like the, uh, um, the color of one point is not equal to the color of the other. So we say that an assignment satisfies a constraint if when we restrict the assignment to the variables of the constraint, it's in the legal function. So like a coloring satisfies some edge if both points are distinct and like a coloring is like a, a, a totally a, a legal coloring if it satisfies all the edges. Um, so uh, we can also define sort of the value of uh, uh, a CSP, which will just be the maximal uh, number of uh, constraints that we can satisfy with one assignment. And I'm normalizing here uh, between zero uh, and one. So I'm dividing by the number of total constraints just for like convenience. And like one of, I think the first uh, uh, NP-hardness results are that CSPs are NP-hard or determining this value is NP-hard just because, you know, three coloring is NP-hard. Um, however, and I'm sweeping like a lot of details and technicalities under the rug, um, one can like equivalently uh, state what's called the PCP theorem as the following, that even trying to approximate this value up to some like multiplicative constant is also uh, NP-hard. Um, so maybe this is not the way that people are usually uh, describing PCPs as in like provers and verifiers, but believe me that this is equivalent. So where do agreement tests and these PCPs or CSPs uh, uh, come together? There is more than one answer to this. Um, so I wanted to sort of describe like one connection, maybe briefly, where one can sort of use agreement tests and to transform uh, CSPs that look at many variables at once to CSPs where every constraint looks at only two variables. I mean, after seeing this PCP theorem, one could a priori suspect that maybe the hardness there comes from the fact that like every constraint is like uh, very complicated because it looks at many variables, but it turns out with the help of agreement uh, test that this is not the case. So we can actually perform a reduction that takes an old PCP to a new PCP while retaining sort of the value of the old PCP to the one uh, of the new one. Um, I'm only gonna like give the rough idea, but I should say that this idea was implemented in like various uh, uh, proofs of theorems like related to PCPs, which I'm not going to uh, talk about. So what is like the main idea? The main idea is suppose that we have like some CSP and suppose that like every subset looks at many variables, K, where K is maybe large. Um, and suppose that like by some black magic, we also have like an agreement test on the variables and the sets inside this uh, PCP with some test distribution. I don't know. So we can create from this a new CSP, constraint satisfaction problem where our new variables are actually gonna be the old sets. Our new alphabet will be K letters of the old alphabet. And now we think of assigning every set a local function, okay, a function that's defined on all the points of that set. So we need K letters. Um, and now for every pair in the support of our test, we will create a constraint. This constraint looks at only these two variables. And it will first check that the local functions indeed satisfy our all constraints. But second, it will also check consistency, check that these local functions actually agree with each other on their intersection. Um, so like pictorially, you know, we start with a CSP that looks like this, a lot of variables in every uh, set, and we end up with a CSP that looks like this. <laughs> so why is this uh, a good idea? I mean, why is hardness retained? Suppose that we somehow satisfy the new CSP or somehow find, found an assignment that satisfies most of the new constraints. Like, what does this mean by definition? 
Well, actually, it means that we found a set of local functions. So first of all, at least most of them satisfy the all constraints. And second of all, they're consistent. They pass this agreement test with good probability, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't satisfy a bunch of constraints. By a, a soundness of agreement tests, we can show that this is if and only if there actually exists a function on the old variable set that agrees with many of these f of s's entirely. And uh, you know, if they agree with many of the f of s's, then in particular, it must satisfy the constraints that these local functions satisfy too. Therefore, it is also a very satisfying assignment to the old CSP. Um, I save a bit of more time, so let me just say like a few open questions in the area. Like one more philosophical open question is rather how to how to actually design these agreement tests. We know some examples, but we can't like directly say for a set system when does it or doesn't it have like an agreement test. As a more concrete question, one can ask whether there are sparse set systems with uh, agreement tests. Where when I say sparse, I mean like families of these set systems where the number of sets is uh, like linearly proportional to the number of variables. In like the 99% regime, this was in fact solved in 2017 by Dino and Kaufman. Um, in like the 1% regime that I didn't define, this is still open. Um, I think that the state of the art today is by Paliazzo, Kavanex, and Vigdalson that had like a small polynomial dependence here. Um, I think I'll finish here. So thank you uh, for listening. Any questions? Okay, so let's thank our speaker again.